to you is how it has the power to accomplish the highest form of happiness. And number three, subject is how it has the power to bring about anything you might or wish for. Or you to, if it, uh, this. And now here are the two texts. How the wish which has been the Bodhicitta mind, the altruistic mind has the power to destroy the great bad, bad deeds or great bad karma, bad karma. <coughs> no, here is the text. The, the thus virtue is perpetually ever to feeble, while the power of wise is great and extremely dreadful. If there were no spirit of perfect awakening with the bodhicitta mind, what other virtues would overcome it? So that means, so this this is the reason, one reason, bodhicitta has power to destroy <coughs> our huge amounts of negative karma. So when we talk about negative karma, you know, we are not only talking about negative karma of this this present life. But we are also talking about uh, previous negative actions and uh, future, uh, all these negative action can be destroyed by practicing this powerful altruistic bodhicitta mind. So that means, <coughs> so this is the text. Now here is the, uh, the meaning of this, this, uh, this shandhi there was. by Gelsen uh, Rinpoche, which is the commentary, is the composed by the commentary of this uh, Bodhisattva way of life. So Gelsen Rinpoche is the disciple of the Lama Tsongkhapa. So in his state, the meaning of this means making great effort to practice the two form of the wish for enlightenment is something which is very right to do. So. So that means <coughs> uh, it is worthwhile to put more effort to to practice these two categories of the bodhicitta mind, which is wishing bodhicitta mind and the uh, engaging bodhicitta mind. So wishing bodhicitta mind. So we have two categories of bodhicitta mind: wishing bodhicitta mind and the engaging bodhicitta mind. So the wishing bodhicitta mind is <coughs> not necessarily you need to take the bodhisattva vows, just you are on the basis of this great compassion and on the basis of um, affectionate love, you wish all just, but not taking responsibility, but you wish all beings liberated from the suffering and pain. So this kind of wish is kind of like wishing uh, wishing bodhicitta mind. And when we talk about uh, engaging bodhicitta mind, so engaging bodhicitta mind is, is more than wishing bodhicitta mind. In order to engage the bodhicitta mind, we need to take the bodhisattva vows. So when we take the bodhisattva vow, then we, we, we need to engage with the Bodhisattva activities. Activities of the Bodhisattva are only six, uh, only six perfections. The perfections of generosity, and the perfections of morality, patience, <coughs> uh, energetic perseverance, and uh, concentration, and the wisdom realizing emptiness. So, engaging Buddhists. So, so if we practice uh, Buddha, these two forms of the Buddhicitta mind, we will be able to destroy all our negative karma in the past, present, and future. <coughs> and then he said something. Uh, this is because we have we have commit committed negative deeds, the dreadful strength. So these deeds that will they will all be other than the wish for total enlightenment that could overwhelm them? The answer is that there is no 
such other goodness. The main point being mentioned here is not the fact that the ultimate ultimate form of the wish has the power to eliminate seeds for the spiritual obstacles. You know? <clears throat> so what happens is when we when we engage with the negative right, negative actions of the body, speech and mind, so we plant a negative seed or the ha habit habituation or negative seed or negative imprint. So which is something like like ordinary seed. And then this negative state will carry within our mind, you know, because the mind is continuation. So we will carry this <coughs> negative state. And then the state will wrap in it. So it means, it means uh, we cannot calculate how much negative we created in the past, but not even today, you know, it's difficult to calculate how much we created from this morning to till go to bed. We don't know, we are not often checking our daily actions of the body and the speech and mind. But the point here is, when we talk about the Buddhist and the mind, it will purify our past karma, present, future, because the Buddhist and the mind is subject. Object is all the limitless sentient beings. So only we created, we created negative toward the sentient beings or toward the holy beings. There are only two objects. So, so Subject buddhiji the mind, object is limit, infinite less sentient beings. And by thinking this, we will purify our negative mind, you know, clean our negative actions of the body, speech and mind. And then, uh, <coughs> uh, so this is the optical, so uh, this is great, optical is negative mind negative imprint, especially uh, self-centered attitude mind. These are optical to the Buddhist mind. The intent rather is to indicate the benefit of wish where it its deceptive form, the wish function to clear away those codes already created which will take one to the birth of the misery and also functions to prevent the continued creation of those goals in the future. This, so this is the meaning of this. So it means uh, <coughs> put each in the mind. So this is the point, maybe we have doubt, right? Because we have, <laughs> maybe we have, maybe we doing prayers and we do lots of reciting mantras and we do lots of good things. Maybe you have we have uh, difficult to you have some doubt over what's the benefit of this uh, doing prayers, uh, practicing buddhicca the mind, and reciting mantra, isn't it? So difficult. How how can we know this <coughs> reciting mantra will purify our mind? Reciting prayer will purify our mind. How can we know they practice the bodhicitta? We often talk about, but we may have doubts sometimes, right? That, oh, how how it is possible, right? So here is a very good example. Here, maybe this will clear away our doubt and uh, superstitions about, because in Tibet, you know, thousands of years we are reciting mantra, you know, and we believe reciting mantras, reciting prayers will help in our mind and also it prevents us from the sickness and all these bad things, negative and plus the uh, will with, with sincere motivation no problem. Even motivation is no good because due to the power of the mantra it will help. So so but uh, <coughs> if I give you this example maybe this will clarify our doubt about reciting prayers, <laughs> reciting mantra, and you know, something like that, isn't it? So you know this uh, Masuri Emoto is the researcher, like kind of like scientist. So, so he first he went to the river, 
and uh, he bring glass of water, you know, glass of water. And so he put glass of water and he said, Lama, he first he said, thank you, only thank you, you know, thank you. And then he take drop, uh, what, drop of water, or freeze, thank you, just glass of this ordinary water, you know. He's researching. So he took a glass of water and and then said thank you. Only this one. <laughs> and then drop of water. And then he, he freezed this drop of water. And then after this, uh, then with a very powerful camera, you know what's called the mechanism of very very powerful camera. So he took photo, you know, photo of this just saying thank you. And then uh in the photo, he shows like snow flag, you know, snow flag, and it's beautiful. It's very beautiful, <laughs> very clear, you know, and with beautiful uh, picture. Just saying thank you, and then <clears throat> with this powerful mechanism camera, you know, and when he took the photo, it shows like snow flags, beautiful, you know, when when we see the snow flags, they're a beautiful image. Like so beautiful and clear. Then number two he same water, but he said uh, appreciation and uh, something he said appreciate and love. Then then he displays that water and then uh, with camera you know too, and then even much more beautiful in the picture with this camera, you know. And then he repeated the name of the Mother Teresa, you know, Mother Teresa. And then when he, he repeated the name of the Mother Teresa and he, with this powerful camera, it's beautiful, you know, just because Mother Teresa is kind of like a Bodhisattva, you know, with <coughs> amazing, amazing person, you know. So this is the positive side he researched, right? Now negative side he is researching you know, from this man. So negative side, he went to the same water, but what name, he bring lots of young people and you know, big loud noise, <laughs> noisy music, <laughs> something like that. And then he bring glass of water, you know. Again he freeze the water and took photo with this very powerful camera. And then in the, in this picture, you know, very black, everything black show us, you know. <laughs> not not very good looking uh, picture, you know. And then second he said, another, you know, like, say he said uh, something like that, you, know. you make me very sick, I will kill you. <laughs> you make me very sick, I will kill you. And then took the photos, and then that picture is horrible, you know, black and scary, you know. Scary picture. And then, Third, he said, <coughs> name of the, you know, adult Hitler, you know. And then this same water, this just ordinary, exactly same water, you know. Ordinary water and then drop water, took the photo, and then the image is so scaring and it's just unbelievable, you know, not very good image. So through research, right, so they are just researcher and then something, you know, and then also he took the, you know, like dirty water, exactly, dirty water, put in the glass and he also said, thank you, and freeze the water and he took the photo and then the water that uh, more clear, you know. So this is the, just, just thank you, just saying appreciation, love, Saying like that, purifying water, isn't it? So when we recite the <coughs> prayers, and when we recite the mantra, no, 100% guarantee it will purify your mind. Just saying thank you and appreciation and stuff will purify all something showing like this, isn't it? So this will maybe, because we believe uh, when we recite the, with sincere motivation, we will recite the mantra of the Manipanam, mantra of Buddha, there's no question in purifying all mind. Even motivation is no good, you know, like, it will purify due to the power of the mantra, isn't it? Just like the researcher, isn't it? 
And then, uh, then we do prayer, right? What's the point of doing the prayer? Like, if somebody gets sick, we ask to do prayer, please. Would you, would you mind saying prayer? Keep this in our daily practice or, or meditation. Then he went to America, right, to research. He made two categories in the hospital. You know. People don't know, but he made two categories in the hospital, you know, sick people, you know, two categories. One category of the sick people, then keep in the prayer, you know, prayers. Others are not in the prayers. So make two categories. Then he researched with this research. Then he found in the people who are <coughs> remembering in the prayers, these people are more happier and uh, recover from the sickness faster and less problem. You know, people who are other side opposite. So this is like something you know. We 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 think as uh, doing prayer is not important or whatever you know. But when we see something like that, we can find how powerful you know when we do the prayers. How powerful when we say the prayers, mantras, prayers. So this is the uh, you know we can we can clarify you know uh, on doubts. And number two is here now. Uh, this uh, how it has power to accomplish the highest form of happiness. So this, so this text here. The Lord of the sages who have been content, contemplate, contemplating for many eons have seen this alone as a blessing by which joy easily increased in the immeasurable, immeasurable multitude of being are rescued. So this is the Shantideva text. Now Gelsar Rambuch's commentary on this. Bodhicitta is like a very special seat, very special seat. One that has the power which allows us to limitless number of living beings. Great mass of sentient beings attain the highest of the happiness and allow them to do so with ease, with perfect ease, that is without having the undertake in his such difficult spiritual practices as undertaking the life of a cave dwelling yogi it is just as the lion say which goes what person with any intelligent and all who lose heart is going easily to ease so another reason you know why we need to practice this Buddhist the mind, because we are talking about Buddha in the three times of the Buddha, past, present, and Buddha. All Buddha follow this wish, Buddhist the mind, and we can be enlightenment, perfect enlightenment, because of this mind. Without this mind, there is no Buddha. You know, there is no Buddhisattvas. All the Buddhas and Buddhists are arising from the Buddhist mind. So, so this is the uh, <coughs> next is how it has power to bring about anything you might ever wish for. Right? Now, text you. Those who long to overcome the abundant misery of the mundane existence, those who wish to dispel the good Lord among the victorious, no, no, no. Uh, 
because we can say there once more that it is very right to practice the very wishful. It is the highest means of the helping all living things, both oneself and other. This is because there is no higher method for persons of any level, whether you are one of the those who is practicing attitude of the those of meeting, you know, people who practice uh, uh, with the Four Noble Truths, with the trainings of interdependent origination and liberate from the cycle of existence, or uh, medium capacity, and those who has hope to smash the thousand pens of cycle of existence as that exist within your own being, or whether you are one of the those who is practicing the attitude of great capacity with this Buddhist uh, activities, person, uh, greedy scope, you know, people who, who hope to solve the unhappiness of absolutely every living being or to bring them to the many thousands form of the happiness, meaning the happiness of the higher realm and definite good so people who practice uh, to be reborn in higher realm you know like human god and demigods higher realm uh, this person then must strive to develop this very wish for enlightenment and never give up give it up which is to say never let it degenerate one has succeed in developing it. So once the uh, once you succeed this you never develop it. So first uh, so therefore first what you have to do is first we have to uh, make two points isn't it? So number one is the uh, how the six other personal instruction are the either cause or the effect of compassion. And number two is how the first four personal instructions recognizing you know, who are the cause of this uh, uh, so number one uh, how the sorry how the six other personal instructions are the either cause with the effect of compassion, two categories, sorry. How the first four personal instructions recognizing being the mother, remembering the kind of the mother, repaying the kind of the mother, and uh, great love are the cause of compassion. And how the superior thought, superior thought extra thought, extra compassion, and and the uh, buddhichida are the effect of compassion, isn't it? So that means uh, first, because when we talk about the cause, six causes, right? And effect buddhichita. Or we can say seven cause, which is included equanimity, then seven causes and effect buddhichita, right? So now, First, we have to think how compassion arises from the special thought, right? How compassion arises from the affectionate thought, right? So Lama Sankaba said, we must distinguish love and affectionate love, distinguish. Because the love, the affectionate love is the direct cause of, uh, direct cause of Buddha to the mind. Generally speaking, the ordinary law is not direct cause of the mind, right? So first, the compassion arises from effect, affectionate law. So once you understand the compassion arising from the affectionate law, then you will understand how these four, you know, these causes, right? Recognizing, sending with the mother, remembering kind of mother, repaying the kind of, and a great law, how, how, how can we develop, right? So that means first, 
we do have compassion in it so certain level of compassion in it sometimes we have uh, uh sometimes very difficult to 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 increase compassion right some part sometimes we may have very strong compassion but very easy to lose right sometimes we have not that strong compassion but we will carry compassion certain level of compassion so we have certain level of compassion as well sometimes it's difficult to very, very difficult to develop compassion sometimes very strong compassion but lose it very quickly sometimes the compassion is not that strong but we will carry the compassion little while but here when we talk about the this uh direct cause of buddhi to the mind we need compassion to be strong and stable both right stable compassion as well as strong compassion stable strong compassion is the direct cause of buddhi to the mind that means we need to see all the beings very attractive right this is how but difficult now how can i how can i believe like this right how can i believe how can i practice this all beings very attractive because right now here is the that uh, if you take good example of you may have very uh, good example of your very precious child and mom you know is the highest highest affectionate love from the ordinary people right little baby and mom affection is the highest from the worldly perspective this love is highest love between mom and little baby's uh, affectionate love is the very good example of so if you take this example you know this small baby child and mom affection is so strong right if something happened to the baby you know mother will be upset and she will have pain and there are compassions and she can do anything to her her son or daughter because mom this mom and uh, these uh, little children affection is very strong so so ordinary level you more you affection uh love compassion arises right now this is the point isn't it generally speaking now how can we possible to extend this affectionate love to the all beings right we can't extend to one one single person maybe you don't like this person right see the very unattractive when you see the unattractive you never to have compassion when you see the person is attractive compassion arises it is we don't have to use any reason but is we all experience right it's natural right so and then uh, how can uh, i extend this affectionate love to all the beings how can i see all these beings to be very attractive you know it's very difficult you know even one single person you know making you are attractive and how can i extend this all when i talk about all beings is the far far more father father you know impossible something like that but 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 impossible you know if we train the mind it's possible with this courses we train with this courses possible right lama tsongkhapa said if you we all experience there are three three object if you uh, for example if you you say you may have very good friends right and you may have enemy and this friends are you so friends your friends is very close to you very dear to you because this will give you more affection and love to you love to you because of this very dear very just uh, ignore you no know, attractive unattractive or whatever is so so then 
So when we take the, now number one is, we are talking about how compassion arises from the special thought, right? Remember, the special thought brings you compassion, right? More, more, more you affectionate love, more compassion arises. Just take your baby example like that. So this is the difficult, now if you train the mind, right? Then this will change your attitude. And slowly, you are able to extend this attractive to the whole first maybe maybe this is ma mother is a very good example you know mother is symbol of compassion mother and baby right this is why the recognizing mother is number one step because mother and baby's affectionate love is extremely strong it is highest love in, in this ordinary perspective, isn't it? So therefore, now here's the, we have to distinguish, isn't it? Great compassion, great love. Why we need extra, extra, extra thought, superior thought? Why we need, right? Because great compassion and great love is common practice with with the Hinayana practitioner, they also practice great compassion and great love. Just, you know, but they don't have the extraordinary compassion, which is the superior thought. Remember, superior thought is direct cause of bodhicitta mind. So the great love and great compassion is not direct cause of compassion because Hinayana practitioner, they have great love and great compassion. They practice great love and great compassion, but they don't practice the superior thought. Superior thought is kind of like extraordinary compassion. Extraordinary compassion is taking a task and responsibility, you know. That, that, that is the extraordinary compassion, isn't it? Extraordinary compassion. So if you take the example of this uh, mom and little child, the more affectionate feeling, more compassion arises. If the first step is very good, second to easy, is it not? Second, no, but no, no, recognize sending me as a mother, and remember, remembering the kind of mother, repaying kind of mother will be very easy. If the step number one is very good, right? And then uh, uh, loving kindness and the great compassion, then uh, superior thought, and then bodhicitta isn't it? Bodhicitta So here, so therefore, we can say that great compassion and great love is not direct cause of bodhicitta the mind. Superior thought, extra love, extra compassion is the direct cause of bodhicitta the mind. Okay? Do you understand what I'm saying? Here is uh, like, for example, like <coughs> uh, in the sutra, I would have give good example, you know, like this is an example of uh, like, uh, you know, marching merchant family who really want one son and one son <coughs> you know people who do business merchant is the merchant right family household and merchant who really desire to be one boy and then born one boy right right then baby grow <laughs> baby will grow and then baby will go to go to dangerous things <laughs> dangerous places and sometimes you have to watch the baby Good baby, you go anywhere, sometimes dangerous place, <laughs> and then this baby fall down into the dirty severe, severe. And then there's a mom there, relative there, and, and there, there's they have compassion to the day, baby, but they're not going there, you know, just watching. <laughs> uh, compassion, you know, but compassion for your baby. And then there's the father coming, you know, father come and uh, rescue the baby from from this severe dirty. So this is the very good example, even. So that means <coughs> that that is severe symbolizes samsara, you know, samsara. So desiriam, form, form, form the people who are in the samsara, and this little little baby, you know, fall down in this 
that is symbolizing the suffering beings in this living. And then these are Hinayana, you know, here and so little they are like this mother and relatives watching but doing nothing. You know. But father who has courage jump there and rescue this baby is like superior thought, which is direct cause of uh man, isn't it? So Buddhichitaman. So this is this is what we are talking about. These uh, and now here also we need uh, economity, right? Number one, economity. Without economity, there is no base of compassion. Without economy, no base of great love and great compassion. Economy is like uh, making the ground smooth. If the ground is smooth, then you prepare to plant the seed. Then you prepare to, you know, uh, moisture with the water. And then you wash it with water and then it will grow the sprout the sprout and then give you branches, fruits, everything like that, isn't it? So similarly here is the good example like this one Tibetan master said, economy is the grounded motion with love. Right? Compassion is the seed uh, nourished by the warm superior thought. Proud of Bodhicitta, you know, Bodhicitta is proud of Bodhicitta. Branches extend the two accumulations. Accumulation of merit, wisdom, and matter of accumulation. Until you attend the final fruit, the three bodies of the Buddha, you know, Dharmakaya, Sambhukaya, and Nirmanakaya. Like Lord Buddha's pure body, Pure speech, pure mind. Isn't it? Dharmakaya is the emptiness of the mind of Lord Buddha. Irmanakaya is the manifest in Buddha in Shakyamuni. Sambhukaya is the you know, special Buddha, isn't it? Special Buddha. So that means economy the is like ground, right? So you need to make your ground more even. If the ground is very rough, you can't plant the seed, isn't it? So similarly, no equanimity, there's no basis of great love and great compassion. Compassion is the seed, isn't it? Seed. So the ground, and then you need moisture. This compassion is seed. With the nourish by this compassion seed. If the compassion seed is good, then a special thought arises. A special thought which I uh, mentioned before, is special thought error, taking responsibilities and test, taking tasks, you know, so special thought error. Right? And then the special thought which give you the spread of the mind. Special thought is the direct cause of the mind. When the the mind grow, then all your practice going higher and higher, like branches. Tree give you branches, many trees, many fruits. A tree give you many, many things. If the tree is very good, if you look after the tree, it will grow and give you many fruits and many branches, things like that. If the seed is good, economy is good, grounded by economy is basis of your great love and great compassion. And seed, which is nourishing with compassion, Nourishing with compassion means you are carrying compassion, you know, compassion. Energy of compassion is always there, you know, nourishing with compassion. And this will give rise to a special thought, which is a superior, extraordinary thought, which means taking responsibility. When you, when you have this kind of thought, then this will bring you Bodhicitta mind. So the Bodhicitta mind is is something that you want to achieve in Latin men. The one is uh, so, so direct cause of Buddhist mind is uh, 
superior thought, which is like which is like father who jumped to the severe dirty and rescued the baby. It means that you're not just talking, but taking action. You know, not just talking. You know, like it's always <laughs> that uh, talking is not good, but I have to do something. You know, so action. You know, taking. And then this, uh, this, uh, uh, this, uh, mm, this baby, you know, baby, baby who fall down into the dirty sphere is like, like us. We are in the samsara, you know, because samsara means we are in the piece of psycho existence. We are all suffering, you know, mentally and physically suffering, isn't it? So therefore, <coughs> uh, so when we practice buddhicca the mind. We will purify the mind, purify the mind, right? As I mentioned, this is a researcher, you know. Just saying thank you will purify you like that. By practicing and researching this prayer, there's no question about 100% I will guarantee you <laughs> to purify. We can't see it, but this researcher, you know, just saying thank you, appreciation, you know, loving kindness, and saying name of the Mother Teresa, just feel this beautiful picture, you know, showing like this. So that means, generally speaking, you know, our body is a, <coughs> the human body is uh, created by these four elements, right? The element. So we have water element is something like 60 to 70 percent of our body is water, very connected to the water element, right? Remember, we have all this urine, blood, everything. Well, seventy percent of our body is strongly connected to water element. When we recite the prayers, when we recite the mantras, all these elements purify like water. You know, just like this glass of water. You see the water. Just thank you, saying purifying like this. We recite the these mantras and prayers. We purify all our water element inside our body. When the water element is purified, then we have less sickness. It is pure, right? So if the, this water element, if you put a drop of uh, black uh, ink, all turn to the black. Exactly the same what we are doing like this. When we have negative thoughts, anger, and like, all this water element, just like this, you drop. Glass of water. <laughs> Here is the glass of water, and then you put drop of ink, completely like this. All this turn your element negative, and then pain, suffering, all this you know unhealthy, healthy body, and then all this. This is the this is the what <coughs> uh, there are many many are in our monastery. You know. Some uh, great master, you know, lamas. They, they heal many sick people, you know, by blessing the water. Just people go there will by line like this. Many, many thousand people cured just for like, drinking, the blessing water. Because the mantra is so powerful. I mentioned, as I mentioned, people researchers, you know, people researchers, this researching like thank you. Will purify this, <laughs> you know. Say thank you, beautiful, you know, picture like snowflake. And if we say one mantra is mantra, mantra is very comprehensive, very powerful mantra, blessed by Chandrasi. There's no question, isn't it? So if we recite with loudly, anybody here can receive blessing. Let the imprint. Something like that, isn't it? So it means the buddhichita, with, with, with the motivation of buddhichita mind, everything will grow fast. Like this tree and giving you many branches, isn't it? You, you can't count the branches, in so many branches. So you will be motivated by this, uh, by buddhichita mind, when we recite one mantra, it's much, much more powerful. You know what I mean? It will purify our mind. It will prevent prevent us from the sickness too. You know, like for cancer, things like that. There are many, many good examples in in, in our society. You know, people go to see the 
blessing Lama, and the people, some people have cancer and maybe killed by these masters because of the reciting mantra and then this will purify your water energy. The water is strong, 60% 70% your body is connected to the water. So if you are reciting mantra with sincere motivation, you purify all this, your water element and everything is very clear, right? If you have kind of like drop, drop the anger, then polluted this clean water, and then bring you bad energy, isn't it? So this is the point, isn't it? So this is the um, teaching. Thank you. <laughs>